Okay, I'm going to go over how to complete 3-1-1, 312, and 313 uh, for uh, the Excel worksheet. This Excel worksheet, really the way that it's intended to uh, be completed is everyone in your group is supposed to do a portion or is supposed to do pretty much all of it. And then you all come back together to work on it uh, and to make sure that it's perfect. Um, it's not supposed to be something that's terribly difficult, uh, but more of uh, something that uh, is really just helps you to understand how to do everything, especially in Excel. Um, so just use this opportunity to really help one another to do a really great job on this. So first of all, we have this uh, different uh, information on the decision tree, the sampling versus uh, population versus sampling distribution. Uh, and there's uh, information in all of here that will help you with everything if you want to zoom in. Um, and then you also have the decision tree worksheet. If you do the decision tree worksheet, uh, it gives you places to work out the problems. And then the decision tree is exactly the same thing, but there's no place to work out the problems. Also, you have information on the population data. Uh, and then you also have information on the sample data. Um, and so this is the actual sample data. Uh, so I took a sample here. You'll see for this particular one, uh, it is a sample size. Let's see how large the sample size is. Sample size of 233. Uh, and you're going to be analyzing this to be able to give information about it. So you've got the sample data there and have, for instance, right here, sample size, sampling error, standard error, Z calc and T calc. So first of all, the sample mean, so you're going to go to the actual sample data. Um, so you come over to the sample data and for artist age, I'm going to do equals. Um, so we've got mean, so artist age. So uh, let's go to sample data. Uh, and I'm going to do uh, average sample data. Let's do, I'm just going to, I should have put average first. And then I'm going to highlight all of this. Okay. And then just press enter. Okay. And then uh, we also have the standard deviation of the sample. So equals standard deviation of the sample. And we're gonna come over here to the sample data. And I am going to highlight the sample again. So artist age, I'm gonna highlight everything right here. Okay, and that's all that you've got to do. So you've got the sample standard deviation and you've got the, uh, the mean of the sample. Now, the question is, is, okay, we've got the population standard deviation and we've got the population mean, but then we also have the sample mean and the sample standard deviation. Uh, I'm just gonna tell you right now, it's really unique to ever have population data. You rarely ever have population data. Um, and so, uh, you almost always are working with the sample mean and the sample standard deviation. Um, and so uh, when you have the population data, you really should use the population data because it's uh, more accurate. Uh, but there's going to be multiple times through this worksheet that I ask you, please use the sample because I'm saying, hey, use this as if you didn't have the population information. If you didn't have the population information, you would be using a T distribution. If you didn't have the population in information, you'd be using a sample standard deviation, not a population standard deviation, so on and so forth. Okay, so next, uh, sample size, so equals uh, count. And uh, so this right here, count, count counts the number of cells in the range that contain numbers, or count A uh, counts the number of cells in a range that are not empty. A lot of times I like to do count A. Um, and so I'm going to go to sample data and I'm going to say, okay, give me artist age and I'm going to highlight everything. And we're going to go like this. Uh, and it gives me 232. Let's see here, I wanna see something really quick. I'm trying to figure out gives me 233. Is there a blank? There is a blank. You see, there's a blank right there. So this one does not have uh, age. And that's why we did count A. Uh, count A gives me 232, makes it so that I need to uh, count only the ones that are there. Um, and so just be aware of that. So count A is really good. Or if we were to do just count See, it should just give me 232. Yeah, it also gives me 232. But count A will count it. Uh, 
if if it's if there's anything in there. Count will only count it if uh, if there's numbers. So then sampling error. So we have the sample mean minus the population mean. So right here we have equals the sample mean minus the population mean. So essentially this is the amount that our sample is off by from the population mean. So sampling error, our sample is 2.49 below the population uh, mean. And then we've got the standard deviation uh, divided by the square root of n. Uh, for um, the standard error. And what the standard error is saying is if, if just, just ignore, ignore, um, let's see here, I'm going to tell you what to ignore. Um, we're going to do hide for a minute. Uh, ignore that we have sample information at all. Uh, with the standard error, uh, we are going to say if we took a sample of 232, all possible samples of 232, uh, what is the uh, what is the standard amount that these samples are going to deviate from the population mean um, or the uh, yeah um, so let's uh, let's take a look at this and so we have uh, every single possible sample of 232. So we have a sample of 232, which gives us a mean. And uh, we could take every single possible sample of 232 and all the possible samples of 232, uh, those are all going to be different from the population mean by an average of this amount or so on and so forth. So equals, uh, we're going to do the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So standard deviation of the population. Uh, divided by the square root of the sample size, which is 232 because uh, it doesn't include the blank. Uh, and so that's going to say the standard error uh, is 0.68514. So if we take every single possible sample of 232, it's going to deviate from the mean uh, by an average amount of about six, uh, 0.68514. Uh, and then Z-calc is the sampling error divided by the standard error with, uh, and use the uh, sample uh, standard deviation or the population standard deviation. So we're gonna do equals the uh, sampling error divided by the standard error. And that gives you your Z-calc. And now T-calc is a little bit different. Once again, I told you, hey, we um, really, uh, are rarely going to ever have the population information. So with t-calc, uh, that's what you use a lot of times, and we're going to do equals uh, sampling error. So sampling error is going to be right here, and then divided by the, uh, let's see here, oh, uh, we need to do the standard error with the sample standard deviation. So uh, let's see here, standard error, uh, we're going First, probably what I really should do. Let's let's calculate the standard error uh, with the sample standard deviation. So it's going to be equals. Uh, so standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So sta sample standard deviation divided by the square root of 232. Okay, so that right there is our standard error if we use uh, the sample standard deviation. So I'm just going to click on this again. And I'm going to say, okay, now give me the sampling error divided by the standard error. So we've got the sampling error. So I clicked on the sampling error and divided by, and make sure that you put this in parentheses, the standard error. So the, the standard error with the sample uh, standard deviation. So it's very close. Um, so what I did there is the standard error, or sorry, the uh, sampling error divided by the standard error and make sure that you have that completely in parentheses to give you uh, the uh, the t calc value okay in other words it's 3.62 standard errors uh, below uh, the um, below the population and this is also 3.636 standard errors below the population. 